Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Pop's Workshop. This is the next video in the beginner series, and today we're talking about drills. I'm gonna give you all the basic information on the different types of drills that they have in the market today, and some features and benefits that might be beneficial for you when you're selecting your drill. So let's get started in this today, and don't forget, the next project is gonna be using only the drill and the jigsaw. So let's get started. To start the discussion on the basic drills, I decided to go over to a big box store and there is a huge variety. You'll see the hammer drills, you'll see the half inch drill kits, and you'll also see the brushless impact drivers. And there is a wide variety of manufacturers. And what I want to try to do today is break down to the basics on what the drills are all about and some of the features and benefits of the different types of drills. And you will find that most of the manufacturers all have basically the same features. One of the most important things nowadays that you'll find is that most all of the drills are a 20 volt lithium ion battery. And that will give you a lightweight battery and a lot of strength to be able to do the job at hand. And you don't see a whole lot of difference in the various designs from the various manufacturers. So let's get started into the basics of the drills. Have you ever wondered on a drill what these numbers, this is one and two, what does it mean and what do all of these numbers around this mean? Okay, this one's pretty obvious is drill. But what do all these other numbers mean? Well, let me show you. Well, the first thing, the one and two, have to do with speed. So if I start on one, you can see that's actually fairly slow. If I switch it over to the number two, You can see that's much, much faster. So that's the first thing. It controls the speed. So this is a two-speed drill, which is real common. And when you're putting screws into a cabinet or really into any project, these settings become real important. The probably the most common that you're going to see is the drill. This is the function that you want to place it on when you're using drill bits and drilling holes. But the rest of these are actually torque settings. And when I'm using this to drive in screws and I don't know the setting that I need to have it on, I will always, I will typically start in the middle. This is 22, so I'll drop down to 11 or 12 in this case, and I'll start there and see how it works. Now let me show you what happens when you use this setting. Now this, this could be any screw, but I'm just using a number six one inch screw for this demonstration. Now let's say I wanna attach these two pieces of wood together. Now I have the torque setting on 12, And you see how it stops automatically when it got flush? That's what you want. If I had this on a very high setting, let's bring that back up to 22, and we'll do the same thing. You see, in this case, it just kept right on screwing into the wood. That's too much torque. What I wanted it to be able to do is have it stop where it was flush with the surface. So you can make that adjustment on the different projects. Now with the project that I'm working on right now, I'm using some actual very small screws to be able to put these piano hinges in. 
And what I'm going to do is just mark and, and use my awl, and I'm going to put a hole right in the center. And then I'm going to take this screw and screw it in. And you can see that brings it up tight and it stops so it does not damage the hinge. Now I did this off camera and tested the torque that I needed to have on this particular setting and I needed to have the drill set on six. So depending on what type of wood that you're using, what type of screw, you're going to have to do a little bit of experimentation to get the proper setting. But that makes going through the assembly much, much faster so that you don't over tighten and either damage the hinge or strip out the screw into the wood where it doesn't hold at all. I'm going to do this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and use my awl and put the hole in there. That helps to center the screw. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my screw and put it in. And there we go. That's perfect. Now I only have probably two dozen more screws to go. But now you know what the torque settings mean on the drill, and you also know what the one and the two means as far as the speed of the drill. Another feature on the drill that I want to show you is the reverse. Now this switch will be in different places depending on the manufacturer of the drill. On mine, it's located right here. So if I push it in this direction, then it's actually turning counterclockwise and I could unscrew a screw. If I push it the other direction, then it'll turn clockwise. Now what I want to do is go ahead and remove these two screws. So I verify the direction of the turning of the drill. And then I can go ahead and slip it into the hole. And get my screw out. Another feature that you have on the drill is the ability to twist the chuck and have the bit, whether it's a drill bit or in this case a driver for the screws. And it will just slip into the chuck and tighten down. And that's a whole lot better, in my opinion, than having the old chuck keys that we have to be able to keep and not lose. So this is a good feature. Another feature that you have on most of the drills is some type of storage. In this case, I've got a little clip right here where that would be able to snap in and store an extra bit or an extra type of uh, bit for the screws. And they'll be located on different places on the drill as well. And you might find that some drills do not have it. The next feature that I want to show you is that a lot of the drills will have a light. And you can see the light when you pull the trigger, the light will turn on. And that's very nice, very handy when you're in a dark environment and you need that little bit of extra light to be able to find a placement for that screw or the place that you're going to be drilling the hole. Another great feature about the drills is that these are variable speed. So it's not just pull the trigger and that's it. If you put very light pressure on the trigger, then it will go very slow. And as you continue to increase pressure on the trigger, it will speed up. And I like that feature about the drills too. So when you're shopping for a drill, you need to be able to take a look at the different features and decide what is the most important feature that you're looking for in having a drill. The next thing I want to talk about is the battery itself. These are 20 volt max lithium ion batteries. Now these batteries are the newer batteries that you find on the market today. And the nice thing about it is that they're fairly lightweight. The battery on the generation before this was the NICAD batteries. 
and you do not see very many of the NICAD batteries any longer. But if you do, you'll notice a couple of things. One, they're very big. Two, they're very heavy. There's another disadvantage in the NICAD batteries, and I would suggest not going that route. Now, one of the major reasons that I would really avoid the NICAD batteries, other than just the sheer weight of the battery and the fact that it's big and bulky, is the fact that NICAD batteries have memory. And that's a problem that was well known for years and years and years when that was the only battery that was available. And what do I mean by memory? I'm just going to use an arbitrary number. Let's say the battery life was supposed to be 8 hours. And you fully charge the battery and you expect to be able to use it for 8 hours. Well, what happens with a NICAD battery if you only use it for 2 hours and then charge the, ba the battery again? and then you use it for two hours and you continue that type of cycle, then that battery's life became two hours and you didn't have the rest of that battery life. And that was a big problem. And there were certain things that you could do with limited success on being able to restore the battery life. But the bottom line was, is that battery had memory and it only remembered the time that you actually used it. So if it was a two hour use that you got out of that battery, that's all the life that you had in it. The lithium ion batteries do not have that problem. The memory problem is gone. So you have a huge advantage with the lithium ion batteries. One, they're lightweight, they're much smaller, and there's no memory that you have in it. So when you charge it, you're gonna get the full power out of that battery the whole entire time. So keep that in mind. There are still places that sell the NICAD batteries and I would strongly suggest avoiding that. Go ahead and get the lithium ion. Now I'm gonna put in the link in the description several different options for the different drills that I have looked at and think would be a good value for you. And as always, you can go to the local hardware store or the big box stores and find a drill. Look at them closely, pick them up, hold them in your hand, see how they feel. Buy a drill that's going to be comfortable for you and your hand because you're gonna get a lot of use out of that drill for many years to come. Okay, I've tried to show you a lot of the basic features of the drill. And in the next beginner series video that I go through, we're gonna be making a project only using the drill and the jigsaw. So if you like these videos and if you like this series, please consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget, hit the little notification bell next to the subscribe button so that you'll be notified on the videos as I upload them. Because at this point with my schedule and the babysitting of the kids, I cannot commit to a specific day that I publish the videos. Mainly, I want to be able to get the videos done and out to you as soon as possible. So it's important to be able to subscribe to the channel and hit the little notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload the videos. And I'm actually looking forward to this next project. I think you will too, using only the drill and the jigsaw. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.